Touchdown with Erin Masemola on the bench with local legends. Your questions, your heroes. Welcome to the Touchdown with Aaron Masamola. But most importantly, Reaction Mondays, where we get the opportunity to look at the rugby events that we saw this past week and get involved with you, the fans at home, and to hear what you think about some of the big moments over the past week in terms of domestic rugby. We saw the first round of Super Rugby Unlocked kick off this past week and some great action that we saw as well over there. And of course, we saw the Sharks winning their game. The Bulls struggled a little bit to win their game and the Stormers in enjoyed a first round bye in the competition. But the game that we will be focusing on is of course the Toyota Cheetahs taking on the Pumas and the Cheetahs took that one by 53 points to just 31 that the Pumas were able to put on the board. By joining me is a sports journalist and he's also a rugby commentator. His name is Yuan Tormalen. Yuan, how are you doing this morning? Hi Aaron, nice to talk to you. Great. Yeah, especially on this Monday after such a performance by the Cheetahs, I think it was a great opener. Definitely, and I think I think everybody throughout the Free State and Central South Africa is in good spirits because it's always good to see the Cheetahs winning. Yes, definitely, and I think especially after all the off the field uh, circumstances we had with the Cheetahs and the Pro 14, it was definitely a very satisfying start for them. Definitely. You talk about a satisfying start. I would love to get your reaction in terms of the game that we saw this past weekend at the Toyota Stadium. What was your overall impression, specifically that this was the first game of the domestic season for the Cheetahs? Well, I certainly think that they they started, and if you look at the scoreline, especially in the first half, uh, a bit better than most people would have thought. I mean, you would have expected a little bit of rustiness, in the first game, although they had two practice warm-up games against the Greekos, I mean, warm-up games don't count much when you get there in, in your first official match. And uh, I, I actually think that they surprised most Tita fans and experts even because of the way they started. I mean, scoring in the first minute and a half, I think it was one minute, 11 seconds when Malcolm Yaw went over in the corner. And uh, yeah, especially with the halftime score 41-3, I think they can feel more than satisfied. I think obviously we will be happy. Although the second half probably didn't go as well as they would have thought, but I still think in general it was a great start for them and it laid a platform. It will give them some confidence going into uh, tougher games, if you want to call it that. Definitely. I love what you mentioned in terms of the second half performance because everybody enjoyed the first half because it was complete dominance from, from the Cheetahs. And then the narrative changed a little bit in the second half as well. We saw a stronger performance um, from the Pumas as well. What do you think about um, the Pumas performance specifically in the second half? And to me, it's important to note that you can't really compare the two teams. What are the chances of the Pumas doing well throughout the competition? Yeah, firstly, I'd like to put into context the second half performance because there are a few things that you need to take into consideration. Firstly, the Cheetahs were leading 41-3. So if you're the coach, obviously you must put on your bench and give guys playing time in the second half. That You won't have the luxury to do that later on in the competition when you play tough instance, when you play the Bulls on Friday. So you have to give some guys game time that probably won't get it in other games. So that's the first thing. Secondly, the Pumas did play better in the second half, but I think it was a mixture between those two. And if you're leading by the, the, that big of a margin, surely the confidence and the, uh, the, the reasoning for continuing and scoring, I mean, 100 points, that would have been bad for both teams. Not both, I mean, more for the Pumas, but it would have been embarrassing. So I think uh, your know, fans were a bit critical about the second half performance, but I still think um, you have to see it in context. The Cheetahs also did score a try, which wasn't allowed. They had a yellow card in, this, in the second half. So you will have to take all those things into consideration. If you're the Pumas, you will definitely be happy with the second half performance because, I mean, they, they'll take confidence out of that because when you're trailing by that much and you still have some fighting spirit, I think that's a great thing. And they'll obviously want to build on that for the second half. Um, our second game and the rest of the comp. But, I mean, if you... Know, if you you're asking me about the Pumas and their performance. Um, I'd say for the rest of the competition, they'll take heart, but they probably are still of the one of the smaller unions and they won't get away from that. I think Jimmy, Jimmy Stonehouse also said 
um, after the match that they had about seven under 21 players, guys, new guys. So they don't have the depth and the quality that the Cheetahs have. If you think of guys like Franz Stein, Ruan Pinar, um, I mean Springboks. So it would have been a mismatch from the start, but I think the scoreline did even surprise me. Definitely. And you mentioned a big name that we all know in terms of South African rugby. His name is Franz Steyn, a man who, who almost got his debut in terms of domestic rugby for, for the Toyota Cheetahs. Another name to mention in terms of the debutants is um, Andy Seelentzila, uh, Malcolm Yar, a man who scored there in the first two minutes of the game. And also the man of the match, um, um, Carl Wagner, that we saw have a brilliant performance. In terms of key performances and impact players, how important are these players for the rest of the tournament? Well, the, the likes of Franz Stein is very important. Like, like you said, a two-time World Cup winner. I mean, you can't um, argue against that. And I think the class that he showed, I mean, it's one thing to have him in the team, but then it's like he he was, you know, it was like he was there for a few years. He just played and he enjoyed himself. And I always say that you you can see when a player is happy off the field because that translates onto the field. And I think France is back home. He's in the free state. He's never officially played for the Cheetahs and it was his first game except for the one warm-up match. But I mean, he was enjoying himself, you know, playing with Ruan. And I think that that uh, Ruan Pino is his friend. They played together at the Sharks, Montpellier, and now they're together here yeah, at the Cheetahs. And I think it just translates to the people next to him. The other players, they feed off it. He gives a little bit of, he gives a grabber, he gives, makes a big hit in the midfield. And then you know, the, the other guy you mentioned was Andisa and Chila. And I really think that for a, for a, a new guy coming in, he can be very satisfied with this, with his first performance. The competitiveness at, uh, in the loose, in, at the Lucy's at the Cheetahs are quite, quite big. They've got a lot of good players there. And you kind of need to step up to stay in the starting lineup. Hip and Junior Pocamela, I think, had a great, great performance. And they both still start, I'd say, against the Bulls on Friday. And then Carl Wagner, I mean, uh, what a way to welcome yourself back to the team. He was in Japan with Toyota Verblitz. And I think it was a big loss for the Cheetahs when he left, him and Renil Ihu, who's still injured. And I think Carl brings that um, calmness and experience to the pack, especially because I think one place where other teams might um, try to target the Cheetahs might be in the tight five. And then Carl Wagner is a, is a big player there. He needs to step up. And they also lost Sintu Manjezi to the Bulls. And Walt Steenkamp, who played on the weekend, is also going to the Bulls. So the lock, the lock stocks might be a better, not that big. I know that Renil's still injured. And then Opa Mohoje, hopefully he can play on Friday because he was out with that positive COVID test. So let's see if he's available. Definitely. And, and I think in terms of pace, because the one thing is there, there were key moments where we saw that the Cheetahs had incredible pace. And the man that we, we need to talk about is a man who actually come, comes from the Bulls. His name is Roscoe Speckman. How much of an impact will he have going forward into this tournament? Because those, those fast legs are definitely something that will help on the wings. Uh, they don't call him Speck Magic for nothing. And uh, <laughs> I, I, um, I was quite concerned when he went off. Oh, we didn't come back for the second half, but I think it was just precautionary because he's such an important player for the Cheetahs and he'll be playing his, his old team. It was quite strange for me when Jake White uh, let him go in the first place. I mean, he, I think he was one of the better players for the Bulls, but obviously he probably doesn't fit the way Jake White wants to play. I'm not sure, but the Cheetahs were smiling from ear to ear to have him back. And I think if you look at the back three with Malcolm Yar, Blomikis, and then uh, you had Roscoe, I mean, and then they still have a few players who weren't in the mix yet. Um, if you look at Craig Barry, Rainer Smith still injured, Duncan, Duncan Souls injured. So I think in the back three, they won't have problems to score any tries, without a doubt. I mean, and uh, teams will be aware of kicking on the back three and giving them space. I think that's the one thing that Jake White will try and uh, reduce the weekend, coming weekend, is not to give them too much space to run. Definitely. Looking into the game that's coming this week on Friday, of course, it is that old rivalry between the Cheetahs and the Bulls as well. What can we expect in this game and what can the Cheetahs do better when you are facing a big team that will, of course, bring their big name players? We're talking about a Dwayne Fermielen, we're talking about a Gio, um, Gio Aplon as well. What can the Cheetahs do better to just take this performance to the next level? Yeah, I think uh, the Bulls won't be smiling that big. I think they're more relieved after the win against Rikos. Rikos almost uh, 
um, yeah, pipped them there, and I think Rico's had their chances. Obviously, Jake also rested a few, not rested a few players, but I think Dwayne had a little niggle, so he didn't want to take a chance because he'd rather want to play him against the Cheetahs, with, which it's going to be a much bigger contest. So they'll come here with a bit stronger team, I think. And then, yeah, the things that the Cheetahs can work on is, for instance, their, their line-out work. I think, don't think that was uh, on par yet. And then, obviously, they work in the tight five because the Bulls will bring a, total, a, a totally different onslaught with regards to the tight five and the forwards. And like I say, you first need to get the ball and the forwards need to secure the ball for those backs like Speckman, Ya and Blomikis to be able to run because they won't have that much space. And I think that the Bulls will also play a much more tactical game because they know that the Cheetahs, uh, you can't make it too loose. You can't give them opportunities to just run all over the field because then they will run around you like Roscoe Speckman did. Indeed. In terms of putting you in a little bit of a tight situation, I would love for you to give me a score prediction for the game that we'll see on Friday. Score predictions. I've never been a guy that's that good at Super Brew, but um, if I have to go with my heart, I will go for the Cheetahs because they're playing at home. Like I say, if their forwards can match up to the Bulls, I really think they can they can take it. And if Franz Stein and Juan Pino can still fire. So I'd go for a scoreline like about, say, 28-24 uh, to the Cheetahs. Oh, a close one, you say. Four points difference. Yes, I there. think so. Definitely. I think we are all excited for, for the rivalry to, to restart on Friday. But most importantly, I think we are all just happy to see rugby back on the park as well. So, Yuan, thank you so much for joining me. And you will most certainly become a regular face right here on the touchdown. And we'll continue to look forward to this fantastic season that lies ahead for South African rugby. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you very much, Aaron. It's so great to see rugby back again, even though we don't have spectators on the field. At least we can still watch the matches and the players can get uh, back onto the field. It's great to see it again. Touchdown with Erin Masimora. On the bench with local legends. OFM Sport, the personalities behind the plays.